Never die. Right, this way, Miss Gillen. Thank you, Ida. Don't mention it. Uh, I'll let Miss Toop know you're here, Mum. You need not. But she's in the bathroom. There's no need. Anything. Will you let me speak, girl? There's no need to disturb Mrs. Toop. I have come to see the vicar. Oh, he's in the garden. Well, we're gardening. Tell him I am here, please. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, what an expression. <laughs> oh no, this is awful. I get it from my, her. Who? Oh. Her, ah, Miss Two. <coughs> She's a caution. I know that will do. After you've told them that I'm here, please take my bicycle around to the garage. It's going to rain. Yes, Miss Gillard. Oh, and I love. Don't ride it. Wheel it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, very well, Ida. I didn't know you knew how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Gillen. Tell me sorry to have kept you waiting. I didn't know you were coming to tea. I did not come to tea, Mr. Toop. I have come to see you. Oh, yes. Well, but tea is here, so won't you join us, please? Have a seat. Penelope! Penelope! Oh dear, it's no use. Once she begins an exercise that she's lost to the world. Ah, well, never mind. We'll begin, shall we? Mr. Two! Yes? I am hurt. Oh dear! Where? Hurt grieved, Mr. Two. Oh, yes, yes. Miss Gillen, I am sorry, I am afraid. I am not able to offer you sugar. Uh, Mr. Two! If I could have just five minutes of your undivided attention, it would be so appreciated. Five minutes? Yes. Oh, I certainly, Miss Gillen. Certainly. Five. Five minutes. Mm. <laughs> it's about the decorations for the Church Harvest Festival. What is? Mr. Truth, have you been dissatisfied with my contribution to the church decorations in the past? Oh, no, 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 certainly not, uh, not that I'm aware of. Why? You will remember that I have always decorated the pulpit for Easter and the Harvest Festival. Mm. Why, well, decorating the pulpit is my little contribution. Mm. Everyone knows it. Well, I've been decorating the pulpit since, since time immemorial. Yes, I know, Miss Gillen. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as long as that, Mr. Toole. Mm. No, no, of course not. <laughs> Do go on. Mm. Well, this afternoon, when I arrived at the church to do my little bit, uh, what should I discover but someone has already decorated the church pulpit? No. Who has done such a thing? Why? No one would tell me, but I have my suspicions. Mr. Two, we have always been the best of friends, have we not? Oh, yes, yes, undoubtedly. I do have yes, some tea. Uh, no, 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 no tea, thank you. Wonderful friends. Everyone knows it. That's why I hope what I'm about to say. Uh, I do find it very difficult to concentrate with that dreadful, uh, with your wife's lovely singing. Uh, yes, uh, it's a bit distracting, isn't it? Yes. I'll ask Penelope to, um, Yes. Penelope! Penelope! Oh, Ida, is that you? Yes, darling, it is. Oh, oh, well, tell Ida to bring the tea in, will you? The tea is already in, dear. Oh. Well, go easy on the muffins. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, M Miss Gillen is here. Who? Miss Gillen. What about her? She's here. Oh. Do hurry down, dear. Miss Gillen is hurt. Good. I mean, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keen sense of humor, huh? <laughs> now, where were we? Um, the pulpit, yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Toop, I will come straight to the point. Uh, I have discovered that uh, the church pulpit has been decorated behind my back by Mrs. Toop. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh dear, 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 dear. Hmm. Yes, well, hmm. Most awkward. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have nothing personally against Mrs. Toop. Nothing at all. Uh, there are some who would say that it's not quite the 
going for the vicar's wife to appear in the village in trousers, <coughs> even in this day and age. However, I always say that we must remember that Mrs. Took was an actress, an American actress, before she married you. Hmm. Mrs. Took was also the niece of a bishop before I married her, Miss Gillen, and still is. Uh, of course, of, of course, but uh, the stage of curious profession. <laughs> oh, Miss Gillen, uh, <laughs> you must forgive this, Miss Gillen, but I'm straight from the man. <laughs> of course, one does get so dirty decorating the church, doesn't one? <laughs> quaint, quaint, quaint. Uh, well, who has been playing Mother? Mother? Well, I mean, who's poured the tea? I'm simply dying for a cup, but I'm frightened superstitious. Do you know what the English say? That if two people pour from the same pot, it's the sign of a row. Oh. <laughs> or that one of the two pourers is going to have a baby, and, well, we don't want one yet, do we, Lionel? Penelope, <laughs> please. <laughs> Mrs. Troop, of all things. I poured. Oh, well, good. Oh, by the way, darling, do you think Mr. What's-His-Name will mind? Mr. Who? Uh, you know, Mr. Oh, Mr. Uh, your friend who's coming to take the service for you tomorrow. Oh, do you mean Mr. Humphrey? Yes, Mr. Humphrey. Mr. Humphrey is not a friend of mine, dear. I've never met the man. Oh, well, do you think he'll mind? Will he mind what? Well, I'm afraid we ran rather short of chrysanthemums this year, darling, so I had to decorate the pulpit mostly with turnips and leeks. <gasps> Miss Gillen, more tea. No tea, thank you. Oh. Well, now what have I done wrong now? Penelope? No, there's no use pretending that I haven't erred and strayed. The air is simply charged with righteous indignation. <clears throat> now, Lionel, if you would be a good boy and run along so me and Miss Gillen can let our back hair down and scratch each other's eyes out. <clears throat> I did not come to see you, Mrs. Two. I merely came to have a little well, it's a very exasperating fact, Miss Skillen, that after every one of your little talks with my husband, he and I have one hell of a row. <laughs> now, darling, please. Uh, <laughs> certain Miss Skillen is only trying to help. She's been in the village much longer than you have, and she hears much more of their gossip than you do. <laughs> I'll say she does. <laughs> I cannot stay to be insulted. Mrs. Troop, you have been here in the village for nearly a year, and in all that time, I have always tried to befriend you. Oh, well, then it must be my fault, Miss Gillen, for you see, every time we meet, I am seized by a wild desire to leap onto the village green, tear off all my clothes, and dance the hula hula. Dear. Oh. This is true. If you should do so, we might be shocked, but we would hardly be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope, Miss Skillen was telling me about a soldier in a jeep. Oh, yes, well. That's a most unfortunate incident. Oh, well, you call waving at a soldier in a jeep an unfortunate incident? It's not that you just waved, you you hooed. You hooed? So I did. Did you know the soldier, Penelope? Oh, not from Adam. In fact, I barely had time to notice him. He just waved and you hooed, so I... Wave the new hood back, didn't mm. I, Miss Skillen? Hardly conduct suitable for a vicar's wife, though, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Sometimes I completely forget I'm the wife of, vic of a vicar and behave like a normal human being. Penelope, I nope. resent that. Lionel, if we're going to have a row, we're not going to have it in front of Miss Skillen. You need not worry about me, Mrs. Toop. I am going. Mr. Toop, goodbye. I'm sorry, my good intentions were so misunderstood. Miss Gillen, I can't say how sorry I am. Oh, no need, no need. I think I can forgive and forget. I hope I'm wrong minded enough. Oh, I'm sure you are, Miss Gillen. Penelope, <laughs> I'll see you to your bicycle. Thank you. I am perfectly capable of mounting by myself. <laughs> Miss Gillen. Miss Gillen. Oh, you can take the tea things away now, Ida. Somebody hasn't drunk all their tea. No, it's mine. You can take it away. I don't want it. And you haven't had no muffin? You haven't been letting it get to you, have you, Mum? You know why she's got her knife 
life into you, don't you? I think so, Ida. And so does everybody else. I'll say this for her, though. She tried hard enough, but if she'd have landed him, would have been God help him. <laughs> Penelope, I'm ashamed. Ashamed. I knew it. I knew it. Off we go. By the way, what is it this time? She never did say. It appears that you have decorated the pulpit for the Harvest Festival. What about it? The pulpit has always been Miss Gillen's territory. Oh, darling, I didn't do it purposefully. I promise I didn't. Of course, that meddling old biddy will never believe it. And Olivia, I must ask you to moderate your language. You know, for a person in your position, you should behave with a bit more decorum. You mean I should act the vicar's wife? No, not act, Penelope. Be. Be the vicar's wife. Can't you pretend you are an actress for a little while and behave as more befits the niece of a bishop? Oh, and just how is that, darling? The only bishop's niece I ever knew was in the chorus. You know, I think that you are deliberately trying to provoke me. May I ask you a question? Is it absolutely necessary for you to go about the village in trousers? Why not? They're comfortable, they're serviceable. And they're economical. That may very well be, but as Miss Skillen says... Oh, darling, a woman with a bottom like that can say anything. Penelope. Oh, it's true. Yes, She's I'm... only envious because she can't wear them. I will not stand here to listen to another word of your vulgarity. Oh, and another thing. Lisa! What, Ida? It's really Briggs from the farm, sir. He's at the back door. I'll see him at once. Penelope, may I suggest that you go upstairs and dress? I'd rather the villagers saw you in trousers than without them. She's still here, Mum. Who are you talking about, Ida? Miss Gillen, Mum. She's in the garage. What on earth is she doing there? Mending her bicycle. I punctured it. <laughs> Purposefully? <laughs> no, Mum. Despite. <laughs> Hello? Hello, this is the vicarage, Mrs. Tube speaking. Who? Uncle! Uncle Dudley, where are you calling from? Badcaster? <laughs> what on earth are you doing in Badcaster? Coming here? Tomorrow? Well, make sure you come early enough for the... Oh, I see. Well, you're a wicked old man, but you take a lot of living up to. No, I can't explain now. It would take too long. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. And who was that? Uncle. Uncle who? Uncle Dudley. Uncle, un 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 Uncle Dudley. The, the, the bishop. Himself. The bishop? Good gracious. What was that you said about coming tomorrow? Lionel, there is no need for you to excite yourself. He's staying in Badcaster at the Cross Keys and coming up tomorrow. Cross Keys? That is such an indifferent hotel. Uh, of course, he wouldn't know that. <laughs> even a bishop can learn. <sighs> bishop here tomorrow? And I'm not even taking the service. Oh, I know. Aren't you lucky? Beg your pardon? <laughs> well, darling, Uncle memorizes all his sermons. If he saw you reading yours, well, he'd cut me out of the will. <laughs> By the way, do you think we can get something decent for Uncle to drink? I'm afraid ooh, all we have is some very bad cooking sherry. What shall I get? Oh, I don't know. Use your sex appeal. Uncle is very broad-minded. I'll get what I can. I wonder if I should even go now. Go where? To Wathampton with the Glee Singers. Young Briggs has just come to tell me that the pianist is ill and as they can find no one to replace him to ask if I would deputize for them. Well, why shouldn't you go? But the bishop, being here tomorrow, I've never met him. Well, I know there's no need for you to prepare yourself. Just go and have a good time. <laughs> How they call playing the piano with the glee singers is having a good time, but <laughs> I suppose I must. He's waiting for me. Will you be out late? I shouldn't think so. Although they did say something about a supper after the concert. Apparently that's the principal feature of the evening. Please, sir. Willie Briggs says, will you hurry, sir? I'll be right there. Will you be lonely, darling? Oh, <laughs> good heavens, no. Why should I be? Right, well, good night then. Uh, you will go upstairs and put a few more clothes on, won't you? You're not out either? Yes, sir. Oh, Ida, when you come in tonight, do you think you could put a hot water bottle in the spare bedroom? We have a guest coming tomorrow. Oh, Mum. My uncle, the Bishop of Lax. A bishop? Yes. Oh, and uh, Ida. Don't be in too late. You know how the vicar doesn't like you out after ten. Americans or no Americans. <laughs> the truth! 
trouble with you either. So you haven't got no oomph. Was you on oh. something? Oh, oh, oh. Ida, you, you, you scared me. Uh, is the vicar in? No, he's gone out. I suppose you know that you have punctured my tire. Oh, Mum, I never. You're a very careless girl. I was going to ask if the vicar was in so he could help me with my inner tube. Well, he's gone out. He has gone out. Has Mrs. Chip gone with him? No, Mum, but she'll be down in a minute. Oh. Uh, well, uh, I won't be staying. <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ida, is this a friend of yours? No, <laughs> ma'am. Not yet. <laughs> uh, uh, are, are you the vicar's wife? I am not. Oh, good. Uh, uh, I mean, not. Uh, oh, it, it doesn't matter what I mean. <laughs> Did you want to see Mrs. Two? Uh, Mrs. Who? The vicar's wife, Mrs. Two. Did you want to see her? I don't really know. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, you see, I'm looking for a young lady. Indeed. Do you mean a special young lady? Or would anyone do? I got <laughs> a, a very special young lady. <laughs> a very old friend of mine. Uh-huh. Um, why come to the vicarage? There are no young ladies here. No. <laughs> well, I may not be what you call a lady, but I've got me feeling. Oh, hush, Ida. Young man, have I seen you before somewhere? Oh, uh, I doubt it. I'm sure I've seen your face before. I'm very good with faces. Well, I've had it a long time. Penelope! Clyde! Sweetheart! Darling! <laughs> oh, what are you doing here? Looking for you! Oh, heaven. <laughs> oh, Miss Skillen. The vicar is out. And he will I... no doubt be back very late. But I will tell uh, him that you called. I, uh, and that you will call again probably very early in the morning. But I do That is all, Miss Skillen. Really? I don't, uh, this is a, a friend of mine. We were on stage it's together. It's all right, Mum. <laughs> you don't have to use the sled chamber to get rid of me. <laughs> live and let live, that's what I say. <laughs> well, you certainly got rid of them in a hurry. Oh, yes. But weren't you a little abrupt with the campfire girl? Miss Gillen. Every time I see that woman, my temperature rises and breaks another record. Never mind her. Though, it is a pity that I embraced you in front of her. Why? Well, now she won't rest until she's told my husband. Your husband? Say, you're not Miss Boopadoop or something, are you? Toop, darling, Toop. Don't make it any worse than it already is. But you're not, are you? I am and have been for nearly a year now. But why? <laughs> why not? Well, the last time I saw you, you were a young actress just bursting with ambition. And now you're here, living in England. <laughs> An old married hag. Oh, no. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no mystery about it, Clive. I, I knew Lionel, that's, that's my husband, when I was a child living in England. Then my parents moved to America, and 18 months ago, when I was touring with the USO, we met, we met again, fell in love, and... Well, here I am. But your career? Oh, oh, that. I wasn't what you'd call brilliant, was I? Oh, I don't know. You weren't that bad. <laughs> Are you happy here? Oh, perfectly. Though, sometimes I do lose my temperature and want to scream the place down. Oh, I bet. Mm. Clive, tell me about yourself. What are you doing here and, and in uniform? Oh, well... By the way, can I get you some tea? Uh, no. No, thank you. I'm afraid all we have else to drink is some very bad cooking sherry. Oh, well, I haven't brought anything to cook. 
Well, how did you know that I was here? I saw you yesterday. What? You saw me too. I was driving through town in a jeep. I waved and you hooed and you waved back. Oh, good heavens, that was you! Yes! I saw you turn into the gate here and thought since I had the afternoon off, I'd come look you up. Well, I'm ever so glad you did. I was just starting to wonder what I was going to do to pass the evening. Though, I don't think we should stay in the house. Why not? It's a very comfortable house. Yes, but aside from you, I am the only person in it. Ah, and Miss uh, Skillen wouldn't approve? <laughs> she wouldn't approve, but boy, would she love it. Oh, God, what she'd make of it. Well, we better go out then. Well, there's nowhere to go around here. Oh, well, we could always just go down to the... <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be quite the thing for the vicar's wife to be seen at the local pub with an American soldier. <laughs> It wouldn't be quite the thing for the vicar's wife to be seen in a pub at all, you fool. Well, I suppose we could go to a movie. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know! Clive, could you bear to stick your nose inside a theater again, or would it simply break your heart? Theater? What theater? Oh, we have a little theater group. Listen, this week the court players proudly present... No! Oh, I can't believe it! <laughs> I can. Six to four, it's Sweeney Todd. No, listen. This week, the core players proudly presents Noel Coward's delightful comedy, Private Lives. No! Yes! Oh, Clive, how many weeks did we tour Private Lives with the USO? Forty-three. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a half through those last three days in Murder Tittle. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Would you bear to see it again? Bear to? I'd love to. Oh, then we'll go. Oh, uh, half a minute. Where is this place? Oh, it's in Blatt It's in Blackford. It's only a few miles and there's a bus. I'm sorry, my dear. The trip's off. What? Well, Blackford is out of bounds. Out of bounds? What does that mean? Well, simply, if I were to be seen there in uniform, I should be shot at dawn. And they cancel my next leave. Hmm. Well, what is the, for what reason? <laughs> oh, sweetheart. There's never any reason for anything in the military. Suppose one of the brass hats thought it'd be a good idea. Pity. Oh, it would have been so lovely. We could have gone and had a meal, seen the show, and had another meal, and come back on the late bus. Sweetheart, you must be hungry. <laughs> it sounds wonderful, but as you English say, we bought it. Excuse me. Ida, haven't you gone yet? Yes, ma'am. I've, I've gone and come back. Why? I forgot Mr. Toops's trousers. What? Uh, remember you asked Mother to fix the... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I took it down this morning. Uh, here it is. Yes. Perfect. Ah, here we go. Ask your Mother to uh, look at the jet. Mum, this, this isn't it. It's not? No, Mum, this is Mr. Toops's second best suit. Oh, what did I do with the other one? How many suits has he got? Three. Black market. I bet you're gonna look for it. Yes. Oh, oh wait, no. I know just where to look for it. Clive, I won't be a minute. <laughs> Turned out nice again, hasn't it? Um, uh, yes, <laughs> rather. I'm Ida. I uh, beg your pardon? I'm Ida. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, I... No! I'm Ida! Oh, you're Ida! <laughs> oh, I'm awfully glad about that. Don't mention it. Say, uh, do you know who I am? No. Eisenhower's the name? You're pulling my leg. As if I would. Well... I think you're Evan. Hmm. Ida, you and I just must go to the pictures together some night. <laughs> but I won't have another night off until next Wednesday. Oh, never mind that. Evan can wait. Here it is, Ida. Oh, goodness, ask your mother to do the best she can with it. Oh, I shouldn't wonder, Mum. She'll make it so you'll never even know it. <laughs> Will she make it so that Mr. Tube can wear it? That's all I care about. 
Uh, I'll fetch a bag with me tonight and put it upstairs. All right. Oh, wait, I will put this one back. Thank you, Ida. <laughs> I wish you win these. Well, you've made a hit. Mm, dainty morsel, that one. Ida, she's an absolute joy. And I wouldn't do without her. Hey, you know what they say. One man's pajamas is another man's night suit. You can't get away from that. Uh, never mind. Uh, look, I have an idea. Turn around. <laughs> what is this? Medical inspection? 99. <coughs> Near enough for size. Oh, Clive, you can wear this. What? Lionel's other suit. <laughs> Are you kidding? Me, a parson? Don't be silly. I'd be court martial. Well, if you go as a civilian, who's to know you're a soldier? Yes, but what if we run into somebody? Oh, no, 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 no. If anyone asks, just say your name is Humphrey. <laughs> Why Humphrey? Oh, he's just a man coming to take the service tomorrow. Now, go in there and change. Oh, 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 give me a second. Hold on now. Give me a minute to learn my part. Oh, my name is Humphrey, and I'm just a man coming to take the service tomorrow. I won't really have to take the service tomorrow, will I? No, of course not. Now go change. Okay. Leave the door open so I can talk to you. Ida! Don't bring her in here. Oh, I'm just making sure she's gone. Someday I'll find you, right behind you. That brings back memories. Oh, you mean the song? Oh, yes. Every night on the tour, the suspense of knowing whether or not you start to write the note. Clive! Immediately followed by the disappointment of knowing that you had Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Oh, I mean, I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's too late. Say, uh, what am I going to do about a collar? Oh, yes. You can use Lionel's. A dog or otherwise? Dog. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I refuse. I flatly refuse. Would you turn around and stay still or I'll choke you? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Mm. <laughs> Steady. My name isn't Miss Skellen. Uh, at this point, I wish it were. <clears throat> there oh. you are. Do me a favor. Swallow. I can't. <laughs> now, we just need to put this somewhere that no one will find it. And somewhere where we can find it when we get back. Yes. Um... Oh, wait. I know. We can put it in this chest. No one ever goes in here. Not once. All that's in it is some tennis rackets and Lionel's old golf clubs. My. Don't you look like a fountain pen? <laughs> oh, you're telling me. <laughs> oh, Clive, I'm so looking forward to this. I wonder if the girl who plays Amanda gets as many laughs as I did. Oh, I wonder if the man who plays Elliot gets as many bruises as I did. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? You know very well what I mean. The fight scene at the end of Act Two. Well, what about it? My God, woman, have you completely forgotten how you used to lose your head and nearly strangle me? <laughs> And that last hit at the very end that's supposed to knock me off my feet? Never once did you get it in at the right moment. Oh, that is an absolute and deliberate lie. Not once. Clive. I beg your pardon. Once. Thank you. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm. Your line was, beast, brute, swine, devil. And you were supposed to hit me on the devil. Instead of which, I invariably got it when I was quite unprepared on the swan. That's because you would move. And I would have had to canter across the stage to catch you if I hadn't gotten it in then. My dear girl, look. I was on the floor. You were on top of me. Oh, I remember that over and over again. Do you remember your lines? Can I ever forget them? Good, I'll show you. Uh, start from this is the end. Hmm. All right, let's see. I was... I was here. Are you ready? Fire away. All right. This is the end, I tell you. 
The end! Now and forever! You're not going like this! Oh, yes, I am! You're not! I am! You shut you up! Never. Shut up! Never. You're an evil! Oh, oh evil man! Oh. Vampire! Oh, I'm so oh, glad I found out what kind of man you are here! Oh, 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 me. No! Please! Mr. Oh. Mr. Trump, this is uh, not that I blame oh. you in, in a way, but oh, oh and the Harvest Festival is tomorrow! Beast, fruit, oh. swine, devil! Skilling came to be here. I shall say what I have to say in the witness box. <laughs> witness box? What on earth could have it? I to come back here. <laughs> oh, good gracious. Hello? Hello, hello, this is Vicar speaking. Who? The police? Oh, uh, yes, yes, Sergeant. Yes. A Russian spy? Escaped from the guardhouse at the airbase? Yes, yes, well, one can cannot be too careful. Is he on? Oh, dear, well, y yes, well, we will, we will most certainly take every precaution. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, thank you. Good night. 
Oh gracious, what with one thing and another. <laughs> Miss Gillen, Miss Gillen, wouldn't you like to go home? Go home? Yes. Please, who? Oh, please, Miss Gillen, please. Listen, I don't wish to frighten you, but there's a dangerous character abroad tonight. Bring him here. I feel like a lion that's taste of blood. Oh. Someone ring! Please, uh, Ida, please listen to me. Please answer my question. Do you know where Miss Tooth has gone? Not a word will I breathe. You can't make me an accelerator before the fact. <laughs> over and over I saw them. What did you see, Miss Gillen? With my own eyes, over and over. Sweetheart, be good. I cannot make head or tail of this. Ida, has someone been here to see Miss Gillen, Miss, Mrs. Toop tonight? My lips are sealed. Over and over with my own eyes, yes. I saw them. So you keep saying, Miss Gillen, but you don't say what you saw. Mr. Toop, if you have forgotten, so have I. It's a closed book. <laughs> oh dear. I, uh, Miss Gillen will have to stay the night. What? She's not well. She's squiffy. I know. Uh, Tight as an owl. Don't you glare at me like that, girl. I am not responsible for Miss Gillen's condition. Then how'd you get hold of the cooking sherry? Will you please stop asking stupid questions? Go upstairs and prepare a bed for Miss Gillen. I'll get some more water bottles. And hurry back down. You'll have to help me get Miss Gillen upstairs. Where could Penelope be? <coughs> Hello, is this the Grange? Yes, is that you, Mrs. Chittenham Chomley? Yes, this is the vicar speaking. Yes, uh, Mrs. Chittenham Chomley, I was wondering if my wife had called upon you this evening. Yeah, you see, there's a, there's a prisoner's escape from the guardhouse, from the airbase. Yes, and he's armed. And he... uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chittenham Chomley. I'm sorry to, have, sorry to have troubled you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> what was that? Hello? Anyone there? Ida. No, I'm locking this door. It should never have been left unlocked. Ida, do you know where my tennis racket is at? <coughs> that won't bring around. I did not ask for your crude observation, girl. I simply asked you, where is my tennis racket? It's in the chest there, where it's always been. Any more of your rudeness, girl, and I'm afraid we'll have to part company. Don't worry. After what I've seen tonight, I'll be parting. <gasps> Good heavens. Ida, how did these get in there? They ain't mine. I am perfectly well aware of that fact. Good gracious, did you lock the front door when you came in? No, but I meant to. Go and lock it at once. No, I... don't stand there gaping, girl. Go do as I say and then hurry back. I want to talk to you. I'm afraid something ter terrible has happened in this house tonight. So your conscience is finally pricking you. Wretched girl. The police. I wonder, should I? Yes. Yes. Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Who, who are you? What do you want? I want your clothes. I want my clothes? Ah, to reach! Where?
legs out. Oh, we better get you upstairs. One minute. Right. Uh, hang on to that. Now, not a word do you breathe. I'm coming, I'm coming. Why is she looking at me like this? Oh, 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 Mr. Drew! Mr. Drew! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mrs. Tooth is expecting me. I just want your honest. Now, <coughs> where's she going? <laughs> Well, did she say when she would be back? She never said she was going. Then I suppose Mr. Toop is with her. Shall I take your things, Your Highness? My things? I, oh, yes. Thank you. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? Well, I suppose it has. We, uh, we wasn't expecting you till tomorrow. Oh. Well, I suppose there will be a bed available for me somewhere. Yes. Somewhere. Oh. Somehow. Who are you? I'm Ida. Oh, Ida. Well, now, that explains everything then, doesn't it? What are you doing here? Well, I'm Ida. I'm the maid. Oh, the maid. Of course, you wouldn't know it seeing me all dressed up like this. Mind you, Your Highness, if I didn't know it was you at the door, I would go back on my uniform. So tonight was my night out. You are forgiven. Well, uh, why don't you sit down and I'll get you some supper. I desire nothing to eat, thank sit you. Sit down anyway! Pardon me, I'm a bit put out tonight. Quite all right, aren't you? Quite, uh, I'll just put these away. What was that? What? I thought I heard someone groan. That was me. Leastways, it was my... Neuritis. Oh, <laughs> Neuritis. You have my sympathies, my dear. I get a touch of that now and again. Mine's in my arm. Mine's in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose every village has one. <laughs> ah. Somebody's. Oh, good. Somebody's. Moscow calling. What? Moscow calling. Moscow calling. Moscow calling. in this house? I haven't read at all. Why? Well, a, a lunatic came in here a moment ago. A what? He, he, he attacked me with a, a rod of iron. I'll fetch some soda water. I don't want any soda water. I want to know who it was that attacked me just now. Perhaps it was a mirage. A what? A mirage. I've just been reading about them in my weekly. In one story, the hero, Digby is his name. He's searching for his manhood. After weeks, his surgeon has taken him into the burning desert. His throat is dry as red hot cinders. His black, swollen tongue is long out his mouth, and his talon fingers is clawing at his vitals. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> I tell you, a man clad in his underwear came in here a moment ago and threatened me with a poker. Uh, he, uh, I, I did notice. Why don't you sit down and uh, take it easy? <laughs> Mum. <laughs> oh, 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 Penelope, my dear. Uncle, oh. um, 
we weren't expecting you until tomorrow. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the hotel is simply too awful for words. I, I simply packed my bags after dinner and fled. <laughs> and you've been here all alone. <laughs> no, not alone. Oh, well, you mean Ida. <laughs> Ida, it's all right. You can go to bed now. I'll take care of the bishop. <laughs> Mum, uh, can I speak to you? Alone. What? No, not now, Ida. In the morning. <laughs> but you don't know what's happened, Mum. Don't bother yourself. I'll <coughs> tell Mrs. Toop. But I'm not talking about what you're talking about, Your Highness. Miss Skillen, Mum. <laughs> Never mind about Miss Skillen, Ida. Just go and put that bottle in the bishop's bed. Not that bottle, Ida. The hot water bottle. <laughs> Ida, come here and let me feel that bottle. Just as I thought it's stone cold. Now run, go fill it again and use hot water this time. <laughs> what is the matter with you, Ida? Alcohol, my dear. <laughs> Shall I put your coat away, no. Mum? Ida, it's all right. Just go and refill that bottle. I did my best. Well, my dear. <laughs> oh, Uncle, uh, it's so nice to see you. Have you been waiting long? <laughs> what, what is that noise? Well, that is the radio, and I will go and shut it off right now. Please, oh. Mom! Now where's she going? Have you been um, waiting long? <laughs> yeah, me. What is the mystery around here? Mystery, Uncle? It's no use you're acting yourself silly. I want to know what is wrong. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, eh? Well, then why have you been acting so queerly? What is the matter with that maid of yours? And who was the lunatic that came in here a moment ago? What? I will not repeat all this again. I will simply tell you that a lunatic, a wild-eyed creature in a state of undress came in here a moment ago and threatened me with a poker. Uncle! He appeared from nowhere and, well, he vanished as quickly as he appeared and when I questioned your maid about it, she somewhat clumsily, I thought, denied all knowledge of him. Well, um, why don't you go and sit down and, uh, then we can, uh, Talk this over quietly. Uh, I'll just go put my jacket away. Penelope, will you please stop trying to humor me? I can assure you that I am in complete possession of all my faculties, and I am, if you'll forgive me for saying so, I believe the only person in this house oh. who is. I tell you again, a man came in here nearly naked, brandishing a rod of iron. He threatened me to the point that... Penelope? Ah, where's she gone? It... Oh, good heavens! Penelope! Oh, eh, you... Are you dead? <laughs> oh, it's just a faint. She needs air. She needs air. Where's... Oh, where is that half-witted maid, anyway? Oh. Whoa! Good heavens, sir! What are you doing there? Praying. Oh. What have you done with Penelope? Well, uh, she's fainted. Why? Well, how the... How should I know? Does she often faint? How the... How should I know? Well, don't supplicate there, man. Help me move into the sofa. Come on, careful now. Don't jog her. Come on. Uh, 
on two. One and two. I'll get some brandy. I simply don't understand this. She was just fine a few minutes ago outside. It must have been the shock of seeing you. What? Oh, certainly caught me both beneath the belt. I'll tell you. Yeah. You give this to her. Her eyes should fall upon you first when she comes round. Why? Well, it, it will give her confidence. <laughs> I doubt it. Come along, my dear. Have a little dinky winky. <laughs> She'll be fine in a moment. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, say, do you have a straw or something? Oh, I did too. What did you say? What? I said, what did you say? I said nothing but, my dear Toop. Oh. <laughs> What'd you do that for? You're not going to faint, are you? Oh, no such luck. Well, now I shall have to get some more. <laughs> yes, get some more. For Penelope. Who? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. By my word, such callousness is astounding. It's tantamount to slaughter. Oh, it can't amount to tantamount to slaughter. <laughs> what is the matter with everyone in this house? Oh, here, girl. Bring those to me. Yes, come here, bring them. Now go. Go! I'll just put these at. Now, oh, where's he gone? <laughs> Mr. that two what? <clears throat> Oh, there you oh. are. So I am. <laughs> what are you doing down there? I, I, uh, I dropped last Sunday's collection. What? Oh, but, but don't worry. I found it. Well, you get that brandy, I'll put this at her feet. But say, shouldn't she have a cold key down her back? I don't know. Is that usual? Oh, of course. Here, you give her the brandy and I'll go see if I can find my uniform. A key. Well, there's no need to run anywhere. I, I have a key here. Oh, you would. <laughs> the key to the poor box? <laughs> Say, uh, this box is too small. We'd have fun trying to get it back, though. <laughs> my, my dear, too. Uh, you, you stay here and give her, give her the brandy, and uh, I'll go get the key to the vestry. Uh, oh, wait, wait, she's coming around. Come uh, back. <laughs> oh, she would. <laughs> here, come here. Uh, Let her see you first. Uh, go on, say something to her. What shall I say? Uh, anything. Uh, just sing to her. It might soothe her. Someday I'll find you, uncles behind you. What are you talking about? Uh, Lionel, Lionel. Oh. Uh. Pen, Pen, can you hear me? Don't yell at her. She's an invalid, not a long distance call. Oh. Get away. It's obvious you have no bedside manner. Penelope, my dear. Oh, Lionel, Lionel, Lionel. Uncle, upside down. Oh. Brandy, get the brandy. <laughs> Quickly. There, there, my child. There, there, my child. <laughs> to get a divorce. What? I said, how long does it take to get a divorce? Oh, there, there, my child. You stop hitting me. Stop hitting her. <laughs> Penelope, you are overwrought, oh, my dear. Oh, say I am. What has this man done to you? I haven't done anything to her, have I? I was speaking to your wife. Who? His wife. Me. His. Had that last gin and lime. <laughs> gin and <Whoa>. lime. <laughs> That's it. You're both inebriated, drunk. <laughs> no, I am shocked and appalled. Uh, you're not going so soon, are you? I am not going out. I am going to bed. We will talk about this in the morning. Now look here, sir. I am looking, sir. 
Uh, Penelope, which of these is my room? Here, I'll show you. You will stay where you are. I can find it myself. Uh, all right. But it's the second bedroom on the left. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Two, it may interest you to know that a much to be de desired living has fallen vacant in my diocese. I came here hoping to find you the suitable person to fill that vacancy. Go away. Just go away. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were called to the church, but apparently you were called to the bar. Uncle, I... Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, oh, the rat. The unspeakable little rat. Oh, I wouldn't call him a rat. <clears throat> Under normal circumstances, I'm sure he is just a cheery old soul. Who are you talking about? Your uncle. Well, I'm talking about my husband. What am I going to do? Oh, I'll tell you what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to go. You to are going to go straight up those stairs to your uncle's bedroom, and you're going to explain to him that he has made an absurd mistake, that I am not your husband, merely an old acquaintance, and that your husband is a very good husband, <laughs> who at the moment is Who at the moment is locked in the arms of a woman in that closet? What? <laughs> He's in there, locked in the arms of that woman. That wo what woman? Oh, there is only one that woman in my life. Miss Skillet. Well, what are they doing in there? Sleeping. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to go in there and raise the devil. That's what I'm going to do. Well, <gasps> well while you deal with that, I'd like my uniform. This situation calls for uniform. I can't be bothered. Oh, I think they're moving in there. Oh, you need to go. I want to deal with them alone. Well, as soon as you've let me get my uniform on, I'll pass out of your life forever. Oh, no, you don't. If I have to explain your way to Uncle, I want you on the spot when I do. Well, give me my uniform then. All right, it's, uh, it's in here. Here we go. It's gone. Huh? Your uniform, it's gone. What? The stripe as well? Oh. Oh, Sergeant. Sergeant, have mercy on me. Well, don't lose your head. My head? What does my head matter? I've lost my uniform, haven't I? Now, don't get excited. We don't know if it's lost yet. And even if it is, you can always just buy another one, can't you? Just buy another one? How am I supposed to get back to base without a uniform? Tell me that! Well, I don't know. Just go as you are and then bribe the colonel to keep his mouth shut. Listen to the woman. Give me my uniform. I want my uniform! Would you stop shouting at me? I'm not one of your brass hats, remember? Really, if this is the kind of behavior the military teaches you, the sooner you resign, the better. <laughs> resign? Resign? <laughs> Please. Please, stop talking. Every word you say is more stupid than the last. You go get, find that Ida from Idaho or whatever her name is and see if she's seen it. Why would she have seen it? And besides, even if she had, how am I supposed to explain how it got in the chest in the first place? I don't know. And I don't care. All I know is I want my uniform. Oh, really? I can't understand how it got moved in the first place. No one ever goes in there. Not once in a blue moon. All that's in there is... Lionel's old golf clubs and some tennis rackets. Woman, look. I am on my knees before you. I beg of you, please, please, don't pour oil on an already blazing inferno. Do something. Get me my uniform. Would you stop groveling on the floor like that? You're getting all the crease out of Lionel's second best trousers. To hell with Lionel's second best trousers! What about my trousers? I want my uniform! Well, I do have an old kilt upstairs. You can always just change into that and say you've transferred to the Gordon Highlands. <laughs> I want my uniform! Would you stop shouting? If you don't find it right this instant, I will go straight up those stairs and tell the bishop Everything! Oh, you wouldn't! Wouldn't I? Oh. Ha! I'm sure your uncle would just love to know the kind of man your husband really is! Oh. 
He's learning to. He's learning. Arms on up above. Arms on up above. Uncle dear, I, I thought you'd gone to bed. Well, I was almost in bed when I heard shouting down here. Oh, well, we were just having a few words. Sounded like a drunken brawl to me. Now, now look here, sir. I am looking. Don't bother. Please, Mom. Oh, Lord. Please, can I speak to you alone? Shall I go? No, of course not, Uncle. Well, I seem to be in the way. It's not your fault, Your Highness. I do wish you'd stop saying that. All right, could you please just, just go to bed? But, Mom, bed! Good night. Good night, Your Highness. Don't call me Your Highness! Your Grace. No, your your Ralph. No. Your Goose. Oh. Penelope, will you please instruct that creature that I am neither the Archangel Gabriel nor the Aga Khan. Now, as for you two. Now, where's he gone? Who are you talking about? Your husband. Oh. Oh, there you are. <laughs> So I am. Yes, well, as I was coming downstairs a moment ago, I couldn't help but overhear what you were both saying. You've got a sergeant like that. Penelope, what are you hiding from me? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Nothing, eh? Hmm. I distinctly heard this man say that if you don't get it for him, he will go upstairs and tell your uncle everything. Now, what did he mean by that? And I suppose he meant nothing when he said, I bet your uncle would like to know what kind of man your husband really is. Uh, Pen, just tell him the truth. Uh, and don't let him blabber on like this. Blabber, sir. Uh, you see, uncle, um, he's not my husband. What? He is not my husband. I am not married to him. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. What was that? <laughs> Nothing! I what? think it was an owl. An owl? Yes. An owl, my sir. Foot! It sounded like a woman in distress. Was it someone in the house? No, it was definitely not. I believe that it was coming from outside. What's the matter? You got something in your eye? Oh, outside! Um. I know, the lily pond. There it is again. Someone must have fallen into the lily pond. But we don't have a lily pond. Of course we have a lily pond. Everybody's got a lily pond. Come, Bishop. We'll investigate. But I'm not dressed for the lily pond. <laughs> lily won't mind. But it's cold outside. I'll get a fire. It won't be but a minute. All right, now it's up to you. What? I'll keep that old man out there while you get your old man out of there. What am I supposed to do then? Start praying. Why don't you listen to them in there? Well, let her out or we'll have the bishop thinking I'm murdering you. All right, come out, Miss Dillon. Oh, oh, a man, a man, oh, Mr. Joe, in there. Would you be quiet? No use shouting at her, she's fainted! Oh dear. What are we going to do? Oh. Shut it off! What was that? That was the door. No! Yes! Oh dear. Um. Shut up! Would you stop shouting? I can't! Oh dear. I'm um, going mad! Oh, Clive! Stop climbing me or I'll throw Miss Hillen at you! Oh! 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 Clive! <laughs> Oh, oh, call the wagons! Oh, Give me a straight jacket! Stop shouting! You don't see him, Red! Tolerish! Tolerish? Quiet! My assailant! Oh. You shan't escape from me! Get Come away, back here, sir! Come back here, sir! Oh, oh, hey, 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 Tell me, get Miss Gillen 
coming out of here. Oh, oh. I might try to tell you about her. Never mind, Ida, Miss Killer, just get her legs. Oh. Hey, come back around the way. Oh, dear, what are they doing out there? Oh, they're having the time of their lives, the dear. Oh. 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 that you must be surprised to see me. Oh, oh no, no, not at all. <laughs> no? Uh, well, what is one among so many? Uh, that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I interrupted you. <laughs> Mr. Toop, could I see him? Mr. Toop? Well, he's, uh, he's around and about. <laughs> Mrs. Stoop, I keep... If my presence here is an inconvenience to you, I could willingly go down and stay at the inn in the uh, village. Oh, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> my name is Humphrey, by the way. Arthur Humphrey. Yes, I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> that way. You see, Mrs. Stoop, after consulting a timetable, I realized that there would not be a train that would arrive in time for the morning. That way? <laughs> in time for the morning service. I wish I could place that one. I beg your pardon. Uh, nothing, sorry. I, 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 forgive me, I interrupted you. <laughs> Where did you say Mr. Toop was? Uh, he's... Round and about. <laughs> Round and about? Mr. Toop, you are Mrs. Toop, you know. Yeah, uh, well, more or less. <laughs> Is there something troubling you, Mrs. Toop? Not a thing. <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> but what about these persons I just saw running through the house and dashing through the garden? Oh, 
those? Oh, you mustn't pay any, any attention to them. It's just, um, it's just the harvest capers. <laughs> harvest capers? Yes, the harvest capers. Uh, it's just a game they play at harvest time. <laughs> would you, would you care to join them? No, thank you. I never caper. Oh. the goose oh, 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 do you sing? <laughs> no, Mrs. Toop, I'm afraid I don't sing. I do recite a little at times, but I don't sing. Oh, well, could you recite for me now? <laughs> now, Mrs. Toop? Yes. Well, what shall you have me recite? Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, do you know there are fairies in the bottom of our garden? <laughs> Well, I should do my best to recite If by Rudy Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about are losing theirs. And blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself. When all men doubt you. Yes, Mrs. Tupa. <laughs> She's not here. Mrs. Tupa. Mrs. Tupa. Mrs. Doom! Come in! Uh. Oh my! There's something in anguish in that closet! No. Be brave, Humphrey! Be brave! Thank you, but could you procure me a glass of milk? 
Oh, oh cool. What? I'll get it right away. Whatever you see, pretend you didn't see it. See? <laughs> Whatever I see, pretend I didn't see it. See. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you ever so much. What was? Your, uh, your recitation. <laughs> Uh, now, do you know, um, the wreck of the Hesperus? She's gone back in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I, I see I disturbed you right when you were about to take a little rest. Uh, well, I'm sure you have had a long journey, haven't you? Eight and three-quarter miles. Ooh, eight and three-quarter miles and no dining car. Well, you must feel like a sodden rag. <laughs> I'll just, uh... I'll make you a pithy up. Oh, well, I really don't want anything. Oh, well, nonsense. I, I make this for all my friends. <laughs> Here you are. That way. This will make you feel all better. Quite delicious. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't, but the glass, do you mind? The glass? Yes. Yes. Well, you are feeling better, aren't you? But, but. <laughs> Why don't you lie back and, and take a nap? I, um, I hear it's just the thing for sunstroke. <laughs> sunstroke? That's it. They're mad. They must be. Oh! Oh! Hey, so I mean, Mr. Two. Mr. Two, I have come to believe that I am in a madhouse. Well, you ought to know. It's your house, Two. Mr. Two, this is the vicarage, is it not? Why ask me, Two? Why do you keep calling me Two? Toop? Well, aren't you Toop? Toop? No. My, well, name my name is Humphrey. Humphrey. Oh! You must be the real Humphrey. That's great. Say, have you seen a soldier's uniform around here? A soldier's uniform? Here, we've got another one. My dear, won't you please have a seat? Uh, you must be tired from all your cases in the garden. Oh. oh, there you are! My uniform? No. Uh. I just missed that for your old man. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Sorry, but same watch. Yes, um, listen, where is Uncle? Uncle? Oh, Uncle! <laughs> Last time I saw him, he was taking a header into a gooseberry bush. Well, well go and dig him out at once! I, I was just gonna sit down for a few moments. What? I our friend here seemed to think it advisable. Well, you did appear a little unstrung. Sir. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Here we are, sir. Thank you. <laughs> what do you keep doing that for? <laughs> what do you keep hiding for every time I come into the room? You bring out the gypsy in me. <laughs> well, you can trust your little Ida. Ida won't squeal. Ida, that's enough. You, you can go. <laughs> I liked you better in your uniform. Oh, wonderful. Oh, say, uh, you, you haven't seen it, of course. Of course. Uh, of course. No, oh, well, is, is that of course you have, or of course you haven't? Of course I have. You have? It's in my kitchen. It's in your kitchen? It's in her kitchen! <laughs> it's in her kitchen! <laughs> so I got it. I uh, took it there for safety. Oh, Ida, I love you. Well, that's enough, Ida. You just go get that uniform and then come back here, all right? He loves me. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Mr. 
justice to me. I cannot help shape the feeling that my presence here is an embarrassment to you. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Do I have your permission to seek accommodations down in the village? Yes, of course. I can't begin to apologize for... <laughs> Why don't you just tell him? Just explain it all. You're a sportsman, aren't you? <laughs> well, I never got a blue for anything, but I'm pretty good at rounders. Oh, rounders? Well, you must come join us sometime. Mr. Two, you are Mr. Two, are you not? Uh, no, that's that's just the thing. You see, my my husband is well, he's outside, and he'll probably be around any minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why don't you go help him? Go find him. Oh, Mr. Two, have the nice... Isn't it infuriating when you can't place a face? What about facing a place, sir? Placing a face? Where on earth is Ida with my uniform? Oh, I got... Oh. Well, look at this dear little man. Why? Well, what's wrong with him? He's tired? He's unconscious. Oh, he's lucky. <laughs> oh, I think he's coming around. Here. Oh. Here we are. Come on. Where am I? Oh, did you have to say that? Yeah, give him this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't want this. Uh, with soda then? Uh, Oh! Air! Yeah, I, I, know, I know where we can get some of that. Where are you going? Um, back to the lily pod. Uh, well, don't lose her, because one door closes, another one always opens. <laughs> oh, hello! Do come in! Listen, you? I am a desperate man. Oh, my dear, I am not exactly carefree. <laughs> Out there in the garden, there are men hunting for me. Oh, no, you're mistaken. They're not hunting for you. It's I just tell the... you, they are hunting in your garden for me. Well, they've got a nice knife for it. Duh. Would you put that away? It might be loaded. It is loaded. It is loaded. What? Be quiet. If you value your life, you must help me. Hey, I'm not Sit down. I am your husband. You understand? Oh, no. I remember him. Your husband or his <laughs> Your husband or your life. There, there, my child. <laughs> Feeling better? So you're saying that you aren't Mr. Two? No, of course he isn't. Of course he isn't. This is Mr. Two. What? I said, this is Mr. Two, aren't you, darling? <laughs> no. Yes. Uh, well, it's, it's nice to meet you, darling. Mr. Two. Say, aren't you kind of a quick one? Huh? Well, not five minutes ago, you were running around the garden in your underpants, and... Now here you are, fully clothed and in your right mind. If anyone could be in this house. Well, you're like that, aren't you, darling? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Ah, dressed today and stripped tomorrow. Mrs. <laughs> do you have your permission to... Oh, yes, of course. Uh, second door on the left. Oh, uh, dear husband, have you have you told him about... And, and has oh, he told you about... Yes, the... yes, of course. It was, uh, it was all a joke, wasn't it? A joke? Oh, yes, a yoke. <laughs> you, you call it a yoke to run around the garden in your underpants? Of course it's a joke. <laughs> Yo, where have I heard that before? With her away, friend? Where can I wash? Well, over if you like. But before you do, uh, would you call it a yoke to run around the garden in your underpants? I've never run around the garden in my underpants. Oh. <laughs> Just, uh, how mad are you? I don't know. I was perfectly sane when I entered this house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just wondering if you thought you saw what I, I thought I saw. What do you think you thought you saw? I I think I thought I... <laughs> Did a pair of underpants just run through here? <laughs> yes, but they were... inhabited. <laughs> Did you see them? Of 
course I did. Well, who was it? Oh, it was the vicar. Well, I, I mean, uh, Then who are you? You're not the vicar. Don't lie. You're not. Stand back. Do not move, any of you. The first one to move a step will get a bullet through the head. Now look here. Oh, it's not my husband. Look here, old man. A young CEO. If you move a step, Dos Batania. Dos Batania? He's a commie! A what? A red! No! Yes! Watch! Dobrish! See? He couldn't resist it! <laughs> One more example of your clerical humor, my friend, and it will be your last. Oh, uh, you know yeah. good. No! No! Perhaps you're right. Uh, this is dreadful. But dreadful. What shall we do? I don't know. We must think. Yes. Let's try that. <sighs> the key to the garage. Uh, you're not going to take my car. I am. Well, you won't get very far. It's out of gas. Is that so? Yes. We just filled our liners. Well, Say, uh, do you mind if we sit down? We've had a rather strenuous evening. Uh, uh, no tricks. Sit down. Do sit down, friend. I, I don't feel like sitting somehow. Sit down! Yes. <laughs> so, uh, where do we go from here? What? Well, we can't just sit here all evening. Listen to me. There are soldiers outside looking for me. Oh, soldiers! Yes! Isn't that lucky? It's lucky for you that you're not a soldier or you would be dead by now. Oh, oh don't be silly. Me a soldier? No. It is, sir. It's a uniform. No, no, take it away. I'm not now, not now. Go, go, come, go, come back. Ah. If any of those men come in here, you're to pass me off as one of yourselves. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> My sergeant would be furious. <laughs> I can see you're going to be troublesome. Perhaps the lady and I can carry off the deception better off the wall. No, but how would you dispose of us? What is through that door? It's just a closet. Ah, you and you, in you go. No, but I believe that particular closet is engaged. <laughs> Who is in there? Sweet Rosie O'Grady. In you go at once! You stop! Now listen to me very carefully. If anyone comes into this room, you're not to make the slightest sound. The lady and I will be close together. Stop that! Ah. She will be covered with this revolver. You attempt to raise an alarm in any way. A bullet will end in her heart. Understand? I think so. No, perhaps you better explain it again. <laughs> oh, chin up, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Then you are, Mr. Two. How nice to meet you. <laughs> How do you do? In you go! No, Mind you. You can't do this to me! Can't I? Oh! <laughs> of course you can! Yeah. Step to the back of the bus! <laughs> First of all, I want some money. Money? For my escape. Uh, well, I'll write you a check. A check! I want money now. You must have some in the house. Where is it? Well, yes, um, I, I have some in, uh, my bedroom, I'll just go get it! Ah, uh, we will get it! Right this way, Tom! Too late, they are here! Sit down! Remember, I am your husband. Between us, we will soon get rid of them. Yeah. Your name, what is it? Penelope! Penelope what? Too. You don't think you'll get away with this, do you? I sincerely hope so, for your sake. <sighs> There's no need to go round to the front door, there's a window here. Alright, alright. Who is that? Uncle! Your uncle, then you'll know that I am not your, your husband. He will betray me and I'll have to shoot you. Oh, I believe you're just aching to shoot me. If you just keep quiet, I think I can save my own skin. And mine? Oh. All right, all right. There's nothing to get excited about. I am not excited, but I tell you that man of yours deliberately pushed me down into that marrow bed. He was only doing his duty for his king and country, see? He thought you was the bloke we were after. I thought you was the Russian spy. Well, I tell you that's... Anyhow, how do I know you're not, eh? You haven't proved it yet, have you, pal? Pal? Penelope, will you please tell this gentleman who I am? Of course, Uncle, uh, Sergeant. This is my uncle, the Bishop of Lax. A bishop? Yes. Oh, hell, sorry, your bishop. Rick, no offense, sir. Uh, uncle, what, what happened? Oh, uh, well, you see, Mum, it's this way. 
We're looking for a commie spy who's escaped the guardhouse, see? We come across the old geezer, no offence, sir. <laughs> Upside down in a gooseberry bush. His legs were sticking straight off, and at first we thought he was a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can assure you, Sergeant, that my uncle is not the man you're looking for. Well, that's that. I say you haven't seen a strange man knocking about, have you, Mum? No. No, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, that's that. Get rid of them. Oh, yes, uh, Uncle, uh, it's been a very long day. Why don't you, why don't you go to bed? <laughs> Sergeant, will you be around long? Oh, we're bound to hang about till we catch him, but don't you worry, Mum. <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried. Well, I'll be off. Say, it's a lovely night this evening. Makes me feel all romantic. Are you married, Sergeant? Why bring that up? <laughs> now, Penelope, I should like a full explanation, and I presume this is your husband? Yes, Uncle uh, Lionel, this is my uncle. You remember me speak of him, don't you? <laughs> ah, told her, hey! Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but I don't understand. If this is your husband, then... Who was the man that kept on hiding? He was the Russian. He was the Russian! You, you mean the man those soldiers are looking for? Yes! Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, because the entire time he was here, he he had me covered by a revolver. Oh, my poor child. But then who was the man that I mistook for a lunatic? That! Ah, uh, well... That, that was you, wasn't it, Lionel? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> and why were you in a state of undress? Uh, yes. <laughs> why were you? Well, you see, the Russian came in here when I was alone. He attacked me and took my clothes. <sighs> oh, my poor children. What a ghastly experience. Perhaps we should call the police. What do you think? Uh, I think you'll be most unwise. You do? What? Before the receiver had left the book, your lifeless body would no doubt be falling to the floor! I did, too. <laughs> Must you express your conjecture so melodramatically? <laughs> My lifeless body. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I feel the need of a stimulant. Oh, well, I'll just, I'll just make that for you, Rob. I'll make it for you. <laughs> Why do you follow your wife like that? I love her. <laughs> the most abnormal passion. Penelope, there's something in that closet. No, Uncle, no, no, Uncle, no. No, don't open that. <laughs> well, why not? Um, it's just a cat. A cat? Yes, it's uh, Tittles. She's been, she's been sleeping in there for years. Well, perhaps it's time for her to come out. <laughs> Stop me or I shoot. Uncle, no, no, don't help at the door. Why not? It, um, it might be dangerous. <laughs> dangerous? Why? Well, she's, um, she's going to have kittens. Oh, I love the little things. <laughs> I wonder how many she'll have. I am tired. Oh, I'm exhausted. Shall we go to bed? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no! The money. The money? The money. Oh. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Ah, uh, well, Uncle, her. Good night, my puppet. Good night, my puppet. <laughs> What's she doing in the closet? Well, I'm just trying to get a look at the old cat. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she's had her kittens yet. A what? <laughs> Listen, you're upset, and no wonder. After the throwing game round you've done tonight, been kind of put out yourself, haven't you? Yes, and the sooner I get put back, the better. Would you like either to make you a nice cold plate of spam? I ask for nothing more than perhaps a few biscuits. They're in the kitchen, I'll get them for you. Oh, don't bother, I'd prefer to choose them myself. We've only got two sorts. Whole and broken. Now where's the point? 
Can't lug this uniform around all night. Mister, what's your name? Paul Brawl, are you out here? Yes, I know. I'm here. I thought you'd gone to bed. <gasps> the Russian! Oh, <laughs> no! My name is Humphrey. You, sir, are an imposter! You don't even deserve to wear those clothes at all. <laughs> oh, you know, do you? Yes. You've changed your cap and escaped your uniform. Oh, no! My uniform escaped me. But I know where it is now. It's in the kitchen. Come back here! Sorry, I'm rather in a hurry. Come back here! Oh, hello. You must be Mr. Humphrey. I am not. Aren't you? No, I'm too. You're an imposter. Beg your pardon? Who are you? I am the Bishop of Lap. Well then, so you are an imposter, for I happen to know that the Bishop is not arriving until tomorrow. I tell you I am the Bishop of Lax, and I happen to know that I have arrived tonight. <laughs> Furthermore, I wish that I hadn't. Where's Penelope? Oh, she's gone up to bed with her husband. A what? Penelope! <laughs> now, where are you going? We're, um, we're going for a walk. <laughs> but you said you were going to bed because you were tired. I have insomnia. Well, that's no reason for Penelope to go for a walk. Well, he, um, he likes me to go everywhere with him. <laughs> Don't you, darling? Darling? Penelope? Penelope, who is this man? That's... <laughs> <laughs> that is no, no, that's Mr. Humphrey. <laughs> Mr. Humphrey? Did anyone call? Oh, it's not in there! What's going on here, eh? Blimey, there's four of you. What's this, the crow's nest? Sergeant, arrest most of these people. <laughs> Why, most of them, sir? Oh, Uncle, if only you'd keep quiet. Oh, Penelope, who are all these people? They can't all be Mr. Humphrey. You pipe down your bishop, Ricky, and I'll ask the questions. Everyone sit down. Now then, one of me lads found these in the garden. The clothes the Russian was wearing when he upped it. I must speak. Sit down. Now, seeing as he's got rid of these, as likely as not, he's wearing clothes that don't belong to him. If he's wearing any clothes at all. Shut up. <laughs> now, seeing as these were in the vicarage garden, it's also likely that he's wearing clothes while he's pinched off the vicar. Most probable. I'm sorry, don't let me interrupt. I won't. Now, what we have to look out for is a man dressed as a parson. <laughs> he's, uh, he's quite right. <laughs> a man dressed as a parson. So if I could just make you want to do it. Off of a minute, off a minute. This ain't the parish council meeting. Excuse me! Who the hell are you? I beg yours. Uh, uh, Sergeant, this is my maid, Ida. <laughs> your maid, huh? No, yes. So what is it? you're the maid. Not very quick on the uptake, are you? <laughs> Can I speak to you, Mum? Alone? No, you can't. Oh. No one leaves this room until I say so. Why? What's happened? Never you mind, my girl. Out you go. Thank your lucky stars you're not mixed up in it. Oh, are you? No, you couldn't be. Out you go. Oh, my dears, what have you gotten yourselves into? Here, Ida. Here's ten shillings for you. <laughs> oh, but you've written... Oh, no, 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 no. No need to thank me yet. Just uh, a piece of advice. Look at your money twice before you spend it. And then quickly... <laughs> now, which of you is the vicar here? I am. Here. Me. This gentleman. <laughs> I shall ask my question once more. Which of you 
is the vicar here. Oh, yes. Yes. I shall ask my question one more time. Which of you, if any, is the vicar here? Lost your tongues, have you? You won't speak. You are. My dear sergeant, surely you... Now then, none of your soft soap. Go on, old chap. Humor him. Call him general or ask him what he did at Lady Smith. What did you do to Lady Smith? What's this? You in this together, huh? <laughs> Good lord, no. <laughs> Is he the vicar here? Uh, um, are you the vicar here? You know very well I am not. How does he know you're not, huh? Because he is the vicar here. I protest. It seems to me that the obvious way to determine who the vicar is, is to ask the vicar's wife. There's something in that, your bishop, Rick. Now, ma'am, I suppose you are the vicar's wife. <laughs> yes, Sergeant. Which of these men is your husband? Ah, uh, well... <laughs> this is my husband! What? That is a lie! Huh? I am my wife's husband! But only have you gone mad. I tell you, I am the vicar of this parish and this lady is my wife. <laughs> then why doesn't she say she is? Penelope, please, for heaven's sake, tell this man the truth. Yes, tell the truth. <laughs> the truth will out, that's what I always say. <laughs> what do you always say, Sergeant? Shut up. Oh, I've noticed. Your identification card, if you please. Uh, well, I, I don't carry my identification card on my pajamas. Default of number one. Your identification card, if you please. It's in my other suit. Default of number two. Your identification card, if you please. So that's Betty Grable. <laughs> Seems that I've forgotten it. A very naughty of me. Very. Default on number three. Your identification card. If, if you please. please. <laughs> well, you see, Sergeant, I am the ghost of Hamlet's father. I don't have an identification card. <laughs> Default, Default on number four. <laughs> a comic parson, eh? You don't make me laugh. Your identification card. If you please. Certainly, Sergeant. <coughs> Blimey, he's got one. To Lionel, the vicarage, Merton come middle. You villain! That is my card. That is my identification card. Those are my clothes. That man knocked me down and took my clothes. Why didn't you say so to before? I didn't recognize him before, but this card proves it. That is precisely what happened to me. I was attacked and my clothes were taken. I, I told you about it, didn't I, Bishop? Uh, but, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. you. Low down, double crossing bunch of baskets. baskets. <laughs> we know. You're under arrest. The whole lot of you. What is that? What is that? Tell me who this was right away. Well, Sergeant, what would you have done with a revolver tickling your ribs? Oh, you mean he? Yes, yeah. Sergeant, my ribs. You dirty commie. <sighs> that reminds me, you won't be needing the housekeeping money now, will you? Yeah. Darling, no wonder you behave so strangely. Your darling? Then you're the vicar here. Yeah. <laughs> Good to meet you, vicar. <laughs> Telephone the police and tell them we've got a burn. Uh, I'll take care of that. Come on. 
We are in the Iron Curtain. Dovarich! Yeah! Good. Yes, police station. Men, come with way, please. Are you all right, my darling? Yes, uh, it was a bit of a shock, <laughs> but I think I'm all right now. I'm so glad, dear. You know, I think I'll go and find out who's ringing those bells. Yes, yes. Is this the police station, Ben? Come, Millerwick. Ah. Huh? No. Some place called Warriors Hall. <laughs> Quick, before anyone comes back, my uniform. I told you it's in the kitchen. It's not. I looked. Well, did you look everywhere? Everywhere! All right. Well, then let's start all over again where we started. At the chest. Why would we want to look in the one place we know it isn't? Oh, you darling thing! <laughs> I never thought I'd be so happy to see you! Someone's coming! Oh, you darling thing! <laughs> I never thought I'd be so happy to see you! <laughs> oh, Susida. Are you alright, Mom? Yes, I, I think so. Oh, did you hear the church r bells ring? Hear them? Oh, I rung them! Well, he wrote on the ten bob note, ring church bells. And the trick worked. <laughs> the ruddy red thought it was the signal for the communist revolution. Huh. Well, oh, that's why he changed his tune. <laughs> Speaking of changing, uh, I'll just uh, I'll go upstairs. Oh, right, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more biscuits in the kitchen? Uh, well, but now it was Ida that was ringing the bells. <laughs> Miss Gillen, haven't you gone home yet? No, but I am leaving your house this instant. Oh, well, that's the best news I've had all evening. <sighs> Mr. Two, you have horrified me tonight. Mrs. Two, you have only served to confirm my opinion of you. Miss Skillen, you may very well be one of my oldest parishioners, but I will not stand here and have you besmirch my wife's character. Character? <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, she might be a trifle bit more broad-minded than the rest of us. Have you seen my trousers? Trousers? Oh! It's him! It's him! It's, it's, it's Mrs. Tube's sweetheart! What? Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, the soldier in the jeep! It was him having the rough and tumble with Mrs. Tube on the carpet! What? I thought it was you, but it... Was you. Penelope, what does this mean? I should like to know what everything means. Uh, well, um. We better tell him, Pen. Yes, I suppose we better. Uh, well, Lionel, why don't you sit over here? <laughs> you see, Lionel, Clive. Uh, I'm Clive. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yes, well, he's an old friend of mine. Uh, oh, very, very old friend. We used to tour together in yeah, a play called, called Private, Private Lives. So. One at a time, please. Yes, uh, help Lionel. After you left this evening, Clive, he showed up here. And, and since we are such good friends, yes. we thought it best if we went out for the evening. Uh -huh. and, and I saw in the Blackford paper that the group there was playing Private, Private Lives. Lives. <laughs> you see, you see Lionel, after I haven't seen evening. Penelope since. Well, I, she showed well, up here. Until yesterday. He uh, I saw her in town while I was passing through with a And cheap. as I was I saw in the house, the I thought it best that we go out somewhere. I saw the Blackford paper that the group there was playing Private Lives. Well, we were trying to find something to do with the evening. But Clax is on bound for Clax, so I lent him your uh, second uh, best suit. <laughs> uh, how far are you? Second best suit, how far are you? Private wise, but uh, I'll catch up. All right. And of course we well, had to see it. If he caught a uniform there, he would have been shocked. Seven days of these pants me, on. Me. But however, uniform. had I had any idea but, that, that me your second be best suit. <laughs> now, now stop me if I'm going you too fast. You do understand what I'm saying, don't you? Know, you? Right before we well, left, well, right before uh, left uh, Clive and I got into this argument where Elliot, that Clive's character, and Amanda, that's my character, get into this terrific fight. You see, we were on the floor like this. And then Miss Skillen. Yes. That's how it all began. <laughs> 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 <laughs>